Peoria Rescue Ministries exist to serve and glorify God through a Christ-centered outreach of love that responds to the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of hurting men, women, and families. Everyone experiences trials in their life. In fact, the Bible says in Hebrews that we will all have trials and hardship if God loves us. Our world today surrounds us with temptations and sin, which can lead to battles with drug addiction, promiscuity, prostitution, alcoholism, depression, greed, abusive relationships, broken marriages, and emotional instability. The following testimonies come from individuals who were once entrenched in battle with these worldly sins and by the grace of God were brought through the battle and into the loving arms of Christ. When Annie and I first met probably the summer of 1989. I was in a probably a self-destructive relationship. God was not a part of our first marriage. At all. At all. Mm -mm. You know, back then, then the partying was fun, uh, drinking was fun for a while, um, and then Annie got into other things that I did not approve of whatsoever, and our bank account disappeared, and that's about when we decided to go our separate ways. And my life before Christ was empty, um, negative, destructive, um, felt pretty alone. Uh, at that time I didn't know what was missing in my life, but uh, nothing I could do on my own would uh, make me happy. Uh, the most important things in my life then were uh, partying and my job, uh, not at the same time, of course, but uh, family. I used alcohol to self-medicate my depression and try to numb the pain from my divorce and the uh, broken heart that I'd been suffering for quite some time. And it did help, but it didn't fill the void. I got divorced. Um, 1995 from the love of my life and that kind of hurt me a wee bit so I wasn't a happy camper. Uh, the thing that led me to Peoria Rescue Ministries was a friend of my ex-wife's at the time and she thought I had something she deemed as an anti-addiction which it Partly was, but the alcohol was a big part of that too. But I came to see Garth Cushman to get help and to get pointed in the right direction. Uh, I came to know Christ on that first day that I met with Garth. Uh, when I first started counseling at the Barnabas Center, I was a little well, nervous, of course. Um, I just knew it was probably my last hope before uh, I drank myself to, de to death which is the road I was headed down at a high rate of speed. Uh, God's changed my heart by teaching me how to forgive those who've hurt me in the past. Um, he's given me a sense of peace that I've never had before. And uh, that's made things a lot, lot better. I always thought there was something missing in my life, so I tried to pers to find that in uh, being married, thinking having a relationship, or through a, a good job, or through um, getting accolades from people, or or how, or just being a people pleaser and uh, money. I think what was missing in my life was um, just I needed to love myself, and I didn't, and I tried to use uh, trying to love other people and that if they loved me then, then maybe I would love myself. And, um, when I was uh, incarcerated at the uh, Peoria County Jail, I, um, the chaplain services there had some literature on it and they, uh, she sent me a pamphlet and uh, I then contacted the Esther House and got an application. 
Um, I think I knew that uh, I needed something um, beyond the punishment of incarceration, uh, or I would go back to th the um, self-destructive lifestyle that I had. And um, the more that I read about Jesus and um, how he forgives us and how uh, life can be different, the more I thought something there was something more to it. Um, the first couple of days that I went, once I went to the Esther house, uh, I was a little, I was skeptical, I was a little scared, but I, uh, I, in one sense, felt secure. You know, and I thought, why are these people all all nice? And so, and it always was, you know, your 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 flesh always thinks, well, what's the catch? And so, there was a time when I, you know, for quite a few months, I was like, okay, well, when's the other shoe gonna fall? And so, it never did. I think I really started believing in God while I was incarcerated. But uh, it didn't really sink in to the point where I really gave my heart to God until I went to the Esther house. I think the, the biggest thing was the people that surrounded me there, that worked there, they were, uh, they walked with their t the talk. I uh, contacted Tom and sent him a card. Well, I didn't contact, I sent him a card in the mail and let him know that I had went to the Esther house and uh, just kind of wrote him a letter to ask for forgiveness and just let him know that I was okay and that I had um, changed and, and you know, life was good. And Before we decided to get married again, we started counseling with Garth again and uh, worked with him with the issues that still we both um, were having and still have. I mean, just because uh, you become Christians doesn't mean you don't, they're not going to have problems. You know, everybody has uh, problems and um, you know, we still have plenty, plenty, and we just know that we can conquer them now, that we're not alone and God is with us and he can, he can do anything. Um, we got married on December uh, 7th of the, I, the next year at Daster House. We got married December 7th of 2007. But it's been great. Uh, we don't have alcohol and drug-fueled rage battles over stupid things or nothing at all. I think it was nine day, we, our marriages. You know, like we're two different people. And we still have memories, you know, there were still good memories then, but I mean, now we just, uh, you know, we're just different, you know, new creatures in Christ. Um, God has filled the void, the emptiness that's, that's in my heart and uh, I just know when there's days, I mean, lots of days, it's not easy. You know, I'm a, mo I'm a mom now, and I have a full-time job, and I'm married again, and life's still going. I mean, nothing's changed around me, but I've changed. But I still, uh, I know that he's there with me. You know, he's, he's walking with me. And um, I think the other main um, thing I learned or that helped change me uh, was when I realized that God loves me unconditionally, and that, um, and I learned that through uh, just the people that were there at the Esther House and um, how how they treated me, knowing you know that I wasn't perfect, and and uh, in society's eyes I might you know that I should probably be written off in in society's eyes, but not you know in their eyes that um, you know I. I'm loved and I'm a new creature in Christ and they didn't judge me. Um, the most important thing in my life is uh, I gotta keep God first. Absolutely. I gotta, um, I know that uh, if he's, he's in the driver's seat that uh, me and my family will be secure, secure in all we do. And I think it's um, amazing how he has restored and, and given me not what I always wanted in the past, but what I uh, what I never thought I'd want, which is is His love and the love of my family and um, other believers. And since we've been married, we have uh, been blessed with uh, a baby boy named Noah.
and he is um, 16 months old, and he is uh, just the light of our life. And he is, he, if anybody doesn't believe there's, there's a God, they just need to take a look at, take a, take a look at a little Noah. And the most, most important thing in my life right now is my family. I've got to give Peoria Rescue Ministries a lot of credit because they not only answered my first prayer in getting my wife out of her self-destructive pit and getting her, bringing her to know Christ, which in turn led me down the right path. My life before Christ was uh, about 22 years of addiction to crack cocaine heroin and alcohol and uh, it was also full of a lot of pain uh, depression anxiety and fear uh, the drugs led me to uh, where I wasn't able to be honest with people I was uh, constantly um, breaking the law ended up in prison selling drugs using drugs uh, at one point I was even in, even involved in organized prostitution um, where I was uh, selling prostitutes for money um, and uh, taking advantage of women um, that had addiction and that were struggling with addiction also. I was led to Peoria Rescue Ministries uh, around 2004. Uh, my dad came to meet me. I was staying in a hotel at that time when I was involved in uh, a lot of organized crime and uh, drug dealing. It wasn't long after that, a couple months after that, I was uh, in jail and I made an agreement with my dad that I would, if he got me out of jail, I would go to the rescue mission for help. And that's when I first uh, was introduced to the staff at PRM and uh, the Victory Acres program. At that time, I wasn't uh, ready to be helped, but that was what first introduced me to Peoria Rescue Ministries. Because I've actually, came to the mission off and on since 2004 but I didn't I didn't really surrender till like 2007 around May of 2007 I would just gotten arrested I was in jail and hadn't seen my family for probably six months um, so I felt really alone like I was going through gonna go to prison and, and, and spend this time alone in jail and in prison by myself um, and I, pray, I prayed to Jesus that day and, and early that night that to, you know, if, the, if he would be with me and help me with through this time that, uh, you know, that this was it and I needed help. And well, uh, it was about 15 minutes after that, I, uh, they told me I had a visit and that was when my sister had come to see me. And I just remember seeing her face and I just something, my heart just instantly softened. I just felt like. Uh, that I would, for Jesus to forgive me and for my family to forgive me like that, it was uh, just huge. And that was a big turning point for me was that time. And then I felt like I surrendered a lot right then. And I knew that that, that was Jesus telling me, you know, you're going to make it come to me. So I would say God has changed my heart um, completely. Uh, he's put in a heart of, of love and um Forgiveness for in, in me for other people and for myself. I uh, I would say that the, what stands out is in John ten ten that says that a thief comes to kill and destroy you, which is what the devil did to me for so long. And then he also Jesus says I I have come that you may have life and live it to the full. He's moved into my life and transformed it to the point where. I'm just overwhelmed and it brings me to tears because of what he's done for me and uh, sometimes I just it doesn't even seem real and I'm just very thankful and what is most important to me now is uh, definitely my relationship with Christ um, first and foremost I pray that he never lets me forget where he's brought me uh, I pray that every day it's only because of him that I am where I am what was missing in my life um, before I surrendered to Christ was really a true direction. The results was a lot of chaos and anger, confusion. Uh, the kids were very unstable, insecure. Um, 
I, yeah, I guess rage and anger just really had a grip on me. Um, before I came to the Esther house, um, I was in um, a very unstable and abusive relationship. Uh, I struggled with it for nine years. Um, I was in and out of it because of the abusive nature of the relationship, and I really struggled with um, wanting to make it better, thinking that I could make it better, that I could fix it if I just said the right things, and if I just loved him enough, and if I just changed enough, then um, I could make it work. And I don't, I wasn't able to do that. I wasn't able to change it, and I ended up leaving and going to Tucson, Arizona, where I found a job, and I found a place to stay, and I got involved with a community of alternative-minded people. I would call them hippies, I guess. And I, I sank back into a lifestyle that I had previously known uh, while I was in college, earlier on in my 20s, before I had children. I was on the streets in Tucson, Arizona, actually, when I finally um, met the end of myself. Um, we were homeless. I didn't have any money. Oh. I, I was on the street, and I had the kids with me, and we were walking down the street, and I, we passed an orphanage. And I looked at that orphanage, and I thought, well, at least if I bring the kids here, they'll have a bed and a meal. And my mom had sent me a cell phone in the mail, and I called her, and I said, Mom. And I was actually, I wasn't that calm. I was hysterical. I was having a nervous breakdown, and I told her that I was going to bring the kids there, and that that was, I was done. I couldn't do anything. Um, and she put into motion the rescue. Uh, my brothers ended up driving from Minnesota to Tucson, Arizona, which is a 30-hour drive. They, um, my brother, who lives in Chicago, was looking on the internet for me, for something for me to do. Um, I think my whole family knew I needed some sort of program something to help me um, for direction and he found the Esther house and he looking back he says he doesn't know how he found it <laughs> the first couple days of the program I think I felt really apprehensive um, my hooded sweatshirt was my best friend because I could pull the hood up and somewhat disappear <laughs> Although, I really didn't disappear. Everyone noticed <laughs> that I was walking around in the middle of June with the hooded sweatshirt on. Um, I was, I didn't think I'd make it. I didn't think I would be able to go through this program. I thought they didn't know what they were doing and that I knew how to do everything. And if they weren't going to listen to me, then why would I bother being there? So I had a lot of pride issues. And I think I had a lot of fear. I had a lot of fear to let go of. Well, before I surrendered my life to Christ, what I thought was most important to me was my freedom. My heart has changed in that I've learned to surrender it. I've learned that it really, really isn't my job to protect it. What's most important to me now is that God is glorified through what I've been through and through where he's brought me that it hasn't been my own doing. It hasn't been um, any certain person or anything here on this earth, really, that it's been all done in the spiritual realm that he has um, worked. I would really like to say thank you um, to God for being so faithful in my life. Where I wasn't faithful, he was, and for his um, sovereign plan to bring me to Peoria Rescue Ministries and work through the staff and through um, my sister residents who were there. Okay, well, um, Jeremiah and I met at the warehouse, the Peoria Mission. Rescue Ministries warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, I needed to find some furniture because I just moved out of the Esther house. 
I, as a parent, was not very good. Still, I'm not very good at being consistent, but Jeremiah brings an extra set of eyes and hands and strong will to help um, provide a consistent discipline for the kids. Um, Me and Rebecca were married uh, June 20th, 2009. Um, it was a, a very exciting day. I, I had uh, all my family there, all of her family, um, and just some of the greatest influences in my life today. I would say God is uh, definitely a part of our marriage. It is what holds us uh, together. Uh, beings that we both have uh, a lot of baggage in our past, um, it, our marriage is centered around God and around His love. Um, I've learned a lot uh, with Rebecca, and I've learned a lot uh, from other people on how to love your wife and, uh, and love your children. When I think of God uh, and what He's done to transform my life, uh, the only thing that comes to mind is, is joy. Uh, every morning on my way to work, <clears throat> I shed uh, tears for probably five minutes, I'd say at least, on my way to work because of, of what he's done for me. Uh, I'm just, I, w I didn't deserve any of it, and, and he chose to, to bless me. When I think of um, what God has done to transform my life, I am so thankful that uh, he's not finished with me yet, and that um, he is faithful to complete what he started. These changed lives are a testament to how God uses your prayers and financial support of Peoria Rescue Ministries to do remarkable things for his children and his kingdom. Thank you for putting practical Christianity in action. Uh, I would like to tell people that were in my place where I was that if I could share one thing with them, it would be uh, in Philippians, Paul says that what I used to think was valuable, I now consider worthless for what Christ has done. Uh, the things that you lose in your addiction that you think you, you, you wish you could get back and you think was important, none of that stuff matters. It's, it's your relationship with Christ. If you go I'm really, uh, I thank God every day for uh, the Esther House and um, the Peoria Rescue Ministries and what it's done for me and my family and what I see it's doing for other people around, around me. Life couldn't get any better. No amount of money would uh, make me any happier than I am right now. So I just want to say thank you.